<sighs> Yo, welcome back to Who Hurt You, Bro? We on episode 17. Let's go. 17. Uh, it's your boy, Jay, a.k.a. Brooklyn Poppy. My co-host. Yo, yo, it's your boy Mel, a.k.a. Legendary Shit. And our fantastic guest today. My name is Courtney Shav. I am the... <laughs> I'm the creator of Spicy Studios, um, you know, education, a sexual education platform with a hilarious twist. So thank you guys for having me on the show. No problem. Oh, thank you for showing up. This is awesome. I'm looking forward to learning things. Yeah. You know what I mean? My mind is open yeah. to different I things. Hope so I hope so. I mean, you know, like sometimes when we talk about sex, we tense up a little bit. So um, who are you? No. On that I'm end. Who are you referring to? People, just in general. <laughs> it's still taboo. As much as yeah, as much yeah. as we live in a hypersexuality society, it's still taboo. A lot of things are still taboo. So, you mm -hmm. know, whatever you guys, whatever conversations we get into, hopefully we we learn something from it. I'm, pretty, I'm, I'm pretty super sure with will. that. Yeah. So we we had some <laughs> we had some topics. Um, I feel like I'm on. Feel like I'm on the... <laughs> so you on what? I feel like I'm on the spotlight. <laughs> Cause you are right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, so we we have some topics, uh, and we always like getting other people's perspective. Cause me and him clash right. a lot on the way that we view things. Yeah, I saw it before the camera started rolling. I yeah, already like. See it. Um, and that actually helps our dynamic because mm -hmm. uh, uh, when we disagree, mm -hmm. we find a pretty cool middle ground. Okay. Um, and a lot of these questions are just things that, <laughs> for instance, we might agree on. It's the nuances in the question Got that it. we'll disagree on. And okay. having someone who's, you know, a, in sex education and wanting to educate people on, yeah. you know, certain dynamics is definitely going to help to prove me right. Right. So. This guy. <laughs> <laughs> Not prove him right. Yeah, no, no, you prove me right. That's where I was at. You, you catch this L. <laughs> so good. All right. So, um, first one is uh, sex on the first date. Is it on the table or off? So we had an episode about this having sex on the first date on our one of our sh uh, shows called Spicy Kitchen, where we basically have a round table. I cook, and we talk about the taboo taboo topics of sex, and one of them was having sex on the first date. Mm. Um. So personally. I feel like we're grown. We are grown. And if the vibes are here, the vibes are there Ooh. and it's flowing and it's going, you know, why not? Why not test drive? Doesn't that sound like what I was saying? What episode was that? I'm not keeping track. Okay. No. okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, also, and I know some I know some people feel like, oh, this man's gonna respect me less if I wait 30 days, 60 days, 90 days. But in that and all actuality, if this man just doesn't like you, whether you give it up to him 30, 60, 90 days, matter, he's just yeah. not going to fuck with you. That's facts. Or, you know, whatever. Because one of, one of our episodes, both of these guys, Wolf and Jay, mm -hmm. I was we was talking. We had a little drinks whatever. So I, I was saying, like, it's okay to grab a girl ass on the first date. You wasn't, I'm not saying You wasn't saying it. You was yelling it. There's a huge I was, difference. I was, I was pretty fucking <laughs> I wasn't saying like grab, you can grab every girl ass on the first date. Right. But I was like, if it happens, if the vibe is right, you can do that. Yeah. And they just had a hard time understanding that. You know what it is? I think maybe, was the hard time with you guys, like the consent part? Was that what it was? It, it wasn't only the consent, it was the delivery of his message oh, okay. was, was aggressive <laughs> as fuck. You can grab her ass on the first date. No, just, I'm, I'm going to do a reenactment. Y'all oh ready? Oh my I'm, God. Let me, let me send up my inner Mel. <laughs> You want to tell me that you can't grab ass on the first date? Oh. Like, when you speak like that, I'm going to catch a lot of undertones there where I'm going to be like, <laughs> probably not. <laughs> you know I mean? like, it's like, you're aggressive. Maybe you shouldn't be grabbing ass on the first date. Maybe but okay. we should pull back. But we came to a consensus at the end that, you know, if, if you're getting into it, there's yeah. kissing, there's touching, oh, and ass grabs happen, then yeah, I would 100% agree. Wolf also agreed once we saw that, yeah. once we took out his unnecessary aggression. <laughs> right. I feel like body language is very very important, right? So if you see, if you're on a date with someone and their hands are folded like this, the closed off, or they're just like a little to themselves, um, then you probably wouldn't do that, right? You mm -hmm. wouldn't want to proceed to grab her ass. But you know, if she's open, if the person you're with is open, they have open posture. You know, you guys are doing flirty banter. Mm -hmm. A kiss goes in there, then yeah, like a, a ass grab can definitely. Go in there, but I also would say, like, you know, you kind of want to check because some people don't like to be um, kissed 
on the first date. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm one of those people. Yeah, some people don't like. Oh, to but you'll grab ass, but you won't kiss. The, 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 of course. The ridiculousness behind your statement right now is fucking wild. Look at her face. So grab her ass. <laughs> Kissing is are bodily you one of those pe- fluids. Wait, wait. Are, is, are you one ass- of those people that like, when you have sex with someone, just someone that you're just like fucking around with, uh-huh. you don't kiss during sex? <sighs> oh boy. Yeah. I, I mean, I have. Okay. I have, but I, I try to, you know, like. You don't think kissing is I feel is like you're hedging sex? right now. But kissing is a part of sex, yes. Okay. okay. But. I try to like hold back a little bit. Like that's like I I put that in a category as like you you don't have raw sex with the first. You no, know, like it takes time to get to that that part. For me, I I personally like, and it might have come with like age as I've gotten older. Mm-hmm. There's a level of intimacy I need in sex, and mm-hmm. kissing is one of those levels yeah. of intimacy yeah. that also gets you to where you want to go a lot faster. Right. Or it proceeds because the other person's also involved, and that can be something that could be a jump off for them. Mm-hmm. So you'll make out in the bar, like off rip. If I the mean, vibes I just, are there, I've, the vibes are there. I've oh, been there. Absolutely. Poppy's I've definitely been, been there. there. I've been there. Like, yeah. Yeah, that's like, definitely been Poppy's bag. <laughs> yeah, I've definitely been there where it's like, oh, this is like, this is feeling mad good. Like, this, this is, this is amazing. Like, okay, let's go in first. So that brings up a, a question. Like, so what? Um, what's some early indications where you be like, ah, right, nah, this might be good. Like, like the sex might be good. The, just like certain oh. things you see, you be like, hold on, wait, I'm a little Women nervous. Women have this intuition of big, big dick energy. And it's just about how a man carries himself. Like, the way he carries himself, what questions he asks, um, especially if he doesn't be ask, asking those insecure questions. Mm-hmm. Um, I think just the way his mannerism and, like, how he, you know, talks to you, well, to me, talks to me, treats me during the first date, you know, what what are the topics of the, what's the topics of conversation? Um and then it's like when someone has big dick energy, it's it's an aura around them. It's like yeah. you just know, like, damn, he about to lay it down. Like, I'm about to get fucked up tonight. Yeah. Like, that's how. Have 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 you ever like you probably thought that and then and then it didn't live up to? Um, that was gonna be my question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think. Um, in my recent like recent years, um, you, you probably got a good radar for that. I feel like my radar has gotten better with age. Yeah, like when I was younger, I couldn't. My radar was like I couldn't tell anything, anything, nothing. But I feel like now with age, I just feel like I can feel it. You can sense it. You I think know? It. Like my my big thing is is um I've, I've been having a, a lot of well, if you can't tell, I'm super argumentative. Mm-hmm. Um, Me too. <laughs> yeah. Um, right. Rad, rad. <laughs> yeah. Right. So um, I was having a a, a discussion. Mm-hmm. Possibly elevated voice discussion, mm-hmm. right? Uh, like about is uh, is chemistry a good indicator of potential good sex? Is like okay. if if chemistry. But the thing is, is that I can match. I can like it can be sexual chemistry, All right. right? I can match with somebody and mm-hmm. everything be good and the sex be ass, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So I don't think that chemistry is uh, a good indicator. Actually, you hit on what I've said before, mm-hmm. which is conversation, mannerisms, and body language mm-hmm. tell me more about what is the possibility of something yeah. going on because people who talk it, their body don't say it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I could say a bunch of things and my body language can give you a completely different feel. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That's true. Mm-hmm. Like I could be like, nah, I'm always with the shits. I love being around people. Oh, man. Man, yeah, yeah, <laughs> right. I'm giving you all the indications that I'm closed right. off, right? My body's right. telling you that, right? So, in, in those instances, that tells me more. So, I got into an argument. They're like, nah, every time I had good chemistry, I, you know, what I'm it was great sex. No. Um, if you nut, that doesn't mean great sex, right? right. That's fine. And a nut does not an orgasm or a nut does not mean great sex. It means okay, you got to the point where you're supposed to get there, and your body released. Mm. Did you have any pleasure in between? Who knows? Mm. You know. And I think that's the the biggest one there is, is for, well, for me anyway, um, is is that I don't think chemistry is that big of a fucking deal anymore. I think just because people people can fake the funk and make you feel comfortable. I mean, they, they can you give you that. And then get into the bedroom and it doesn't even feel safe anymore. It doesn't feel like, oh, I can really like, um, like give this person my, or if, if I don't even want to give this person my body. Sometimes it happens because sexual, sex, sexual language is a big thing too. Like, how you are what when you you're in a that? setting like this mm-hmm. is different from when we're actually in a bedroom. Correct. That's a different energy. That's like, now we're getting, it's more vulnerable and more intimate. Yeah. It's not like us sitting on a couch and just chilling. No. It's like, now you're, you're I'm opening up my body to you. You're opening your body to me. And we're actually inserting, inserting our parts together and eventually like swapping energies. 
that's different. That's, that's a different vulnerability. I, I I like the way you put that because yeah. that that really it, it 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 solidifies those those instances where up until you start having real conversation, you're not you, you're not really sure if that person's gonna be the one that you really want to let either slide in you or mm-hmm. you slide into. Yeah, yeah. So let's say like um everything's going good on a date, whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, finally get to the bedroom, mm-hmm. and it's not really good for you. Mm-hmm. Have you ever like faked a nut? When I was younger, I faked a nut. Wow. I don't do it anymore. Why did you do it when you were younger? Though? Because I feel that women were taught to please a man. And so we, so, and so you guys feel better about yourselves. We always cater to the egotistical man. Mm. So for us, for the man to feel better, we will fake the nut. And I also feel like women, younger women, were not told to prioritize our pleasure. We're always told to. It's to please the man. It's to please mm. the man. We never say, damn, like, I didn't even really, like, he, that head was terrible. I didn't even come from it. Yeah. Oh, damn, he didn't even hit that spot like that. Like, I don't even like when he do that because we're told that our pleasure, from the dawn of history, women have told that pleasure for men is top priority in the bedroom. Even if you look at um, films, like uh, any type of movie, when they're having sex, the, as the sex ends... When the man nuts. That's true. But to be fair, that's kind of when it ends, though. Does it? I mean... I mean... Does it? Penetrative. Penetration, yeah. Penetrative uh, that's, sex yeah, might. Yes. Yeah. Okay, penetrative sex, but sex is sex. You're right. Right? Oral sex is sex, right? I mean, I've made that argument multiple times that sex isn't just sticking your dick in. But right. hey, you know... It's oral. It's always, it's always good it's to hear anal, someone else say it. It's, any, it's, it's, it's more than just penetrative sex. But I, understand. I agree with what you're yeah. saying. I agree with what you're saying. Like, that's why women... Not, they, they fake their nuts. Now, I don't, I don't play you that shit. You ever fake your nuts? Yeah, so men really fake... I've never done I've, that. I've heard that men really You spit on backs, bro. That's what it is. But why, though? Like, what's the, what's the point? <laughs> it's like, like, you just it, out of it, no, you're done? So what happens is... is um. There's two reasons why it can happen. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've spoke on this before. It's, it's called the love of the game. You're in the zone. You can't see your nut anymore. You're just in the act, mm. right? You're so stimulated that now you're past the point of being able to get... You remember, like, you know what I'm saying? When you're in the zone, no, yeah. you're cracking the whole night, mm-hmm. and there's no such thing as a nut. Mm-hmm. But but why still fake it? Like Because I want it to be done. I'm tired. But Or you can just be but, like, you know what? I'm not even... No, but the, the same the same issue happens because what winds up happening is, especially if you're if you're applying a lot of pressure and time into somebody, right? You don't want them to feel like they didn't accomplish anything. Mm-hmm. So the same thing pops into your head, especially well, if, right, if right. you want to sit here and this is someone you want to continue doing it with, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So I'm going to make you feel like, oh, yo, yeah, you killed it, right? Meanwhile, I'm still like pushing down my heart on as but I walk off, if, you know what I mean? If she's still into it, wouldn't you want to just continue to please her then? No, because after a while, like... Continue we, to please her. Like you can stop and just we've, perform oral. Yeah, we like we've we've all been there. At least I, I would hope, right? Where you've already put in maybe an hour, hour and a half, hour and a half of fucking is extreme cardio. Facts. <laughs> Man, anything above thirty minutes is it's extreme, extreme cardio. cardio. Uh, what extreme you mean? cardio. Your heart rates through the roof. <laughs> like right? what? Your blood pressure is rising. Have an hour sex? I mean, when I, I was I, young, I have, though, Poppy was out here. I mean, not an hour straight though. No. Oh, Jesus Christ. Poppy was out here. The Puerto Ricans are like bunnies, bro. No. <laughs> I, I, I still don't get the fake in that part, though. Like, uh-huh. if, if I've, I, I've, I've been in that position, and either we just stop, or either I, you know, like, we, we switch, or we do something no, else. Like, so, you'll, like, you'll switch around, but the problem is that you're still sitting there with a hard dick. Like, nothing's stopping that. Like, your blood flow's still going. But spit on her back ain't gonna change that either. No, because then I can sit here and bring the energy down. Because if you're still performing oral, there's there's a level of like so. For instance, I, we had this conversation about eating pussy. Mm-hmm. I'm big on moans mm-hmm. and body like mm-hmm. uh, body movements and gyration when I'm I'm sitting here performing mm-hmm. box eating, right? <laughs> so like when I'm sitting here and I'm I'm doing that, those are the things that are key for me and those are turn ons for me. So if I do that, I'm my my again my heart rate's not going to go down, my blood my, my blood flow's not going to go down because I'm going to still be excited. So doing that got me out of it for me to come down. Because what happens is when you're that elevated, again, you're not going to get the nut. No matter what's going on, it's not happening. Okay. Let me just say something here because I feel like a lot of things that were, a lot of things that are missing in sex and in in general is having conversations. So Mm -hmm. if you can't nut because you're in the zone, that is something that you want to communicate to your partner and be like, hey, I can't nut. Um, but don't think, don't think that I, yeah. you're not pleasing me. I just, I can't get there. And that's it. Like, I feel like we lack communication because we're trying to save 
feelings. Yep. But feelings get hurt at the end of the day. It's just, it's an easy, simple conversation. I think, I think our our in general, our generation lacks communication and clarity and asks and clarifying questions. And that leads to the bedroom as well, you know? But peop but I think that these are important. Sexually sexual communication is very important. It's not just moaning and screaming and scratching backs. It's also let's have a conversation about what just happened. What took place here? Yep. What took place? You got to do the after action report before it. <laughs> after, after, it's called aftercare. Yeah, it's called aftercare. Aftercare, yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, I I think like the, the the same process goes into your head. Like I don't I don't bother anymore because I'm I'm super communicative now. Mm -hmm. Like I I feel like I need to be. Yeah. Um, just because there's there's shit that happens. Yeah. Um. And I don't want... First of all, I don't want to feel like shit. Right. Like if something goes off on my end. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like what happens if I slide in and I, it's just too good and I don't know what's going on? Yeah, you know I mean? I got to make sure that we're clear on what the deal is, all right? right. If I, I have my fuck up, it's my fuck up, mama. <laughs> I'm going to take care of you. This is my L. I'm going to come back. You know what I mean, give me like 15, 20 minutes. I'm going to take care of you in the meantime. I'm going to come back. But like if you don't communicate and, and have those conversations, you put yourself in a pretty like a pretty fucked up rut because that can fuck with you. Like mentally, if your head is fucked, the rest of your body's not going with what you want. Right. That's a fact. Right. Exactly. Don't fake the nut, bro. Don't fake I haven't done nut. that in years, bro. Don't fake the nut. I'm like, telling all my ladies out here, if you watch the podcast, please don't fake your nut. Don't fake your... Please don't fake your nut for no man, no woman. Don't fake it. If you don't like something that's being done to you, please say it. Because Facts. you are never going to really... you Again, prioritize your pleasure. Like my... Um, our sponsor, Erotic Boudoir. Shout out to you, Nick. She always says, prioritize your pleasure. And it, it's, that's real. That's real. I like that. Prioritize your pleasure. That's real. Yeah, that's good. I like that. If I did that, then it'd be a quick session. I'd be like, right, I'm done. Bye. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> All right, so that, that, brings up a, that brings up another topic. Because our last episode, episode 16, we had a guy here, right? Mm -hmm. And I didn't agree with him at all, right? Okay. He, we, he asked the question, how important is a, a woman's orgasm? Mm -hmm. He straight up said, not at all. Like, I don't give a... Like, I'm trying to get mine. My man said straight exact up. words were... I'm trying to get out the mud, which is the craziest statement the I've craziest ever heard. Well, if I heard you live, that's a fact. That is the craziest thing I've he, he ever definitely, heard. He definitely said that. Yeah. And, and, and he posted our face. He posted, <laughs> yeah, right. he posted our face reaction. He posted like, our faces, yo, it, was, yeah. it was crazy. It was crazy. I, wow. That is selfish as fuck. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, we here at Who Hurt You Bro are big supporters of the female orgasm, right? So we- <laughs> we selfish as fuck. Fuck. Well, wow. that's because in that case he was a uh, very. Don't say it. He was he was on a, a certain portion of like what the internet's doing right now. He was on that side speaking from very male centric points of view. But I get that. I get like ideology wise. But let's just strip it all down to actual sex. Like the more she's turned on or pleased, the more she's gonna please you. Right. So, like, why would like you're hurting yourself? In do you guys know what happens when the female um, body is very relaxed and you and she's aroused? Her her vagina literally opens up to you, and it feels better, and she's more lubricated. So, if you're just going in, not thinking about her, and just ramming it in there, yeah. like I don't like, I just don't understand. Like, why are you having sex and you're not you're not you're not keeping in mind your sexual partner. That's the weirdest thing to me. Yeah. To 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 play devil's advocate for his position. Okay. Right. Um. Again, we Sometimes hear you don't need to play devil's advocate. You you don't. That's, but I was thinking the same thing. But, 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 but okay. he's not here. He's to, not here to, he's not here to defend, defend his position. He's not here to defend. So himself, at this right? point, I feel like there's there needs to be some representation, okay. whether I agree with it or not. Okay. I understood it enough to be able to sit okay. here and, and and defend his position. Okay. His position is is that there's a woman's purpose, and a woman's purpose is to cater to a man and take care of the children. Their orgasm is not important. Their their sexual needs aren't important because they serve no purpose. That's the or thought process. Or they serve process. one purpose. Well, they serve one purpose, which is him. So do you know that the female clitoris has way more nerves yep. than it does when a man... There's a purpose for it. God God did not... And I, if you guys believe in the universe or God, but God put that there for a reason. Why do, why do women clitoris have so much more nerves in their clitoris than... I mean... 
I'm just saying, like things are things are there for a purpose. Things are there for a reason. I'm, there's I'm, no mistakes. I'm going. I'm going to say that at the end of the day, if there's nerve endings on something, it's probably because it wants to be touched, or there's going to be a reaction from the touch. Yes, I completely understand that. 100 percent it's the same way the, the head of a penis is is exact same thing tons of nerve endings probably because it's supposed to be touched right there's gonna be a reaction to it mm -hmm. so i i completely agree you know what it is it's stripping down it's stripping down it's stripping down humans to animalistic ways mm -hmm. and yes we are mammals but we are advanced mammals we create things we think things we're not we're not monkeys. You we're know? not slaves to our instincts, either. right? Exactly. So that's why it just that's why I hate when people like strip the human experience down to like animalistic shit. You know what I mean? So, I definitely agree on that one. So kind of like you know when um, when you talk about polyamory and being in poly polyamorous relationships, they're like, well, we're the only mammals that actually practice it, but practice monogamy. I'm like. Okay, mm. we're not. Yeah, we're um, definitely not. We're not. But also, why are you stripping us down, the human experience down to being animals and mammals? Like, that's just, that's not the human experience. We do not experience the world like, like the squirrels on the street. We do not. That's true. We've created this world. That, that's true. I, I think the other thing is, is that once social norms get set, it's hard to move out of them. And as, as a society... We're constantly evolving and changing. Right. What what we deal with now wasn't what we dealt with before. Mm -hmm. And I, I said it even on that episode. Mm -hmm. um, the gentleman worked in construction. Mm -hmm. I was like, 50 years ago, uh, you had how many people with shovels? Now they're no longer needed because an excavator does that job. Mm -hmm. Right. That's how quickly we move. Mm -hmm. Right. So nothing that we thought was, mm -hmm. uh, if you sit still, the world will just run you by. Yeah. I and I think that's that's the problem now when people continue to go back to well you know uh, when the, you know when we were animals when you know when we were in the woods uh, when I clubbed this uh, seal like you know so we could eat for the night like you're not doing that you're not hunting you're, I don't want to hear we're about not hunter and gathering yeah I don't want to hear about that the only thing you gathering is the shit from the bodega I don't yeah. want to get shit out like what are we talking we're about we're not hunters and gatherers anymore absolutely not so. Yeah, I definitely agree on that one. So that, but yeah, I I don't know. I I just I tend to get really irritated with those kind of uh, mm -hmm. positions. Yeah, because you're stripping the human experience. That's why. <sighs> I, I don't know. So, I, so with the poly situation, you, are you open to that? Who? Like uh, the poly situation. Polyamory? Yeah. Um, no. Why not? Um, because I'm self. I'm a selfish lover. Mm. I'm a selfish lover. Like if, I, like, if I love you, I love you down bad. Like, bad. Um, That's I a real stretch on that yeah, bad. Yeah, that was crazy. They said it twice too. That's how you know it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, you down bad. So, um, yeah, I I have nothing against it. Um, I just don't like when people use polyamory just to fuck around and cheat, mm. or like, you know, just they're using polyamory to like say, oh, I just want to date around. I want to roster because in polyamory. It's a commitment. It's a commitment. You're supposed to be committed to the women that you're taking care of. You're supposed to be taking care of the women or vice versa. Like, you mm -hmm. know, if it's uh, a woman, then the man take care of her. The men take care of her. So um, it's, um, I think people have, <clears throat> have shied away from that. And now they're just using it as an excuse. As to, an excuse to just run around. It's like you're just yeah. roster dating. Yeah, so like, yeah. just, just if you want to roster call it what date, it is. Call it what that. it is. Yeah. Just say, I, don't don't hide behind polyamory because it's different. I know people who are in the lifestyle. It's completely different than what you see out here. And never mind you. I I would think it's much harder. Like at the end of the day, there's there's a lot there because you're taking into account more people's feelings than just yeah, another person. Exactly, and that's the thing. That's the part. When people get into polyamory, they dis they disregard people's feelings. But you know, you have to take care of those people's feelings because you love them, right? Polyamory means multiple love. Mm, I know that. I'm gonna keep it hundred with you. I barely want to deal with another person. You expect me to deal with them too? Like I, I I'm yeah, like, oh. you have to take care of those. You have to take care of those <laughs> emotions. That. No, oh. right, right. So people, I think people use it as an excuse to just like, you know, want a roster date. Let's do that. Just do that. Just say you want to. Just say you just want to fuck around and just, you know, fuck multiple people. Just say I, that. I think it's 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 a level of comfort in certain instances, right? Like when you're in a relationship, right? Um, that sense of comfortability with that person, mm -hmm. that's that's next level. Yeah. Right. It is. 
Um, and it, it definitely gives you that sense of calm when you're there. Mm -hmm. You know, even if you're beefing sometimes, it's whatever. Yeah. It's still a level of calm that you wouldn't normally have. Mm -hmm. But still having the ability to sit here and sling dick wherever you want, <laughs> is it seems like a good time. But again, like... When you do that and you're adding extra people into it, that's nuts. Because yeah. now you have to pay attention to those feelings. Right. And even on the other side, if you're just slinging dick, there's always that potential for something to go wrong. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, there's so many instances of that shit. Like, for me, I I don't know. When I was younger, I was wilding. Um, I was, fuck boy city. Um, right. Fuck boy city. But, you know, as, as I've gotten older, I started to realize it's just easier to close myself off when I'm ready to sit here and be with somebody mm -hmm. and then call it a day for everything else, mm -hmm. just for the reason of the, the headaches are too much. And plus, oh man, the amount of lying you got to do. That shit is work. That's, well, that's a job. Thing. That's the thing. With polyamory, you don't lie. Don't everything's lie, open. Yeah. Everything's open out in the open. Everyone understands where the, where everything is. They understand that they're, you know, you're, they're sharing love of another person. Um, you don't have to lie if you're in a real polyamorous relationship. I I know I, I I I guess you don't have to. No, you don't. You don't. You don't. There's no there's there's boundaries. Why would you? There's boundaries. Like when people get. I don't know. My first thought process is like, nah, I gotta lie this shit out. Right. <laughs> And this, like, is why, this is why most like, men can't be in polyamorous relationships because I, I you couldn't do it. cannot I couldn't lie. Do it. I couldn't do it. It's I, boundaries I just think the hardest part is finding the people who are with it. Like, like finding a man or woman like who's with it, that, that would be the hardest part. Mm. I feel like once you find the three that make sense or have, like, I think it would be, it would be, it would be a struggle like every other relationship. But I feel like it would be... I don't think it would be a struggle like every other relationship. No, there's struggles in polyamorous relationships. No, what I mean by that is, is I don't think that it would be as... It would be more of a struggle? Of course I think it would be no. more of a struggle because there's, there's, so. there's multiple people's feelings you have to take into account. Right? So, for instance, if one's catching an attitude or one upsets you and then you decide to sit here and it happens to all of us, right? Where we have, a, let's say, a bad day mm -hmm. or someone says something to us and someone else has, uh, sits here and asks a question and I'm already elevated and now I snap. Right, so now do I not have a problem here, and I have a problem here? That's what happens when you have multiple people in those situations. I'm not saying that that's the case for everything, but yeah, I can envision that as being an I, I issue. I would imagine that in those situations, it would kind of be, it would kind of feel more like a team, yeah, than a one on one. Right, right. So like, I feel like you know the people that I know that are in these polyamorous relationships, their communication is a one. Every, it every, has to be. Shout out to them. A it has to be, though. One. There's no way it would it's, work without it. Being. Right. It, just, it has to be. A1. Everything is talked about. It is the craziest thing I've ever it, seen. Like, I, I think, mean, I, 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 yeah. you can't do it for like, you know, you guys are working as a team and it's like three or three, four, y'all. You can't make it work with two, like one or like two people. That's crazy to me. Because I feel like most people don't see that as a team. You, ha you have to. You have to, but most relationships. You, you know what it is? I think it's the salesperson in me is to immediately go to when there's more than one person and I need to do shit is to leverage things mm -hmm. to make it easier for me because that's how I've always come up making sure. That's why I can only do one person at a time. Mm -hmm. I can't do multiple because I have to be able to give that person the amount of attention that's required mm -hmm. without sitting here leveraging things or making it feel that way. Because once I go down that road... I fucked up the entire relationship. No one's going to want to talk to me at the end of this right. shit. <laughs> like, right. It's really bad. Do you, um, just a question for both of you guys, but do you guys, um, when you're dating, do you date multiple people at the same time or you take it one at a time? So we were having a discussion about dating. A discussion. Yeah. He was drunk, We're going to get back to the sex, but I just want to know. So we had a, well, what we disagreed was the term dating. So I guess I was wrong. I look oh, at Oh shit. Yo, oh my god. Oh, Yo, Wolf, time stamp that for me, please. <laughs> Yo, time stamp that so, for so me. The, the way I look at dating, I look at dating as something exclusive. Uh -huh. But he was telling me that dating is not exclusive. Dating, you could date 10 girls at once. Mm -hmm. I didn't see it that way. I thought mm. I, in my brain, dating felt like just me, me and her are dating. Okay. And then we're gonna You're gonna get mad at me. But I feel like you're on some high school shit. You're like, oh, well, you know, we're dating, but now nah, nah, I'm going steady with her. Like, it, 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 how I looked at it though, I feel. I, that's how you looked at it. And the I word mean, dating is had more power to me, I guess. Right, and then that's and some some words do that. Some words are more powerful for people than other. So, what about you? Do you date multiple women, or you date one at a time? I think time? no. I I I date multiple women. So, like, if I'm I'm sitting here and I'm I'm going through it, like, um, even when I'm having a conversation with someone with uh. A, uh, a prospect of dating mm -hmm. um, 
Either I let them know or they let me know. Be like, hey, I got multiple people. <laughs> you really time stamped. <laughs> Good shit. <laughs> yeah. Right? Um, like, I'll, I have the conversation. Like, I'm, I'm talking to multiple people. Uh-huh. This is what's going on. Mm-hmm. Um, and then what will happen is, is as it goes along, um, if the vibe is right, then I'll make it exclusive and close off everywhere else. Okay. Yeah, so I, I used to roster date. Um I used to compare it to basketball. I'd be like, okay, I have my max contract player right here. <laughs> got my starting five. And then you so, got the bench warmers. So this right? is no She's been dueling her dates. This shit is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> who got the max contract? <laughs> the one who has the max contract, that's who I'm fucking with. That's who I'm fucking. And like, that's the one that I, like, I potentially want to So you only fuck with. one at a time, though? Like, and, and that's, yeah, that's like when scenario. I roster date, like people, and that's the thing that I think people get misconstrued when you roster date. They're like, oh, you're fucking everybody on your roster. No. I'm fucking my maximum contract player. That's what I'm fucking. For me. I think that's different for me. So in my mind. So <laughs> for me, I'm, I'm <laughs> yeah, only, my maximum is different. only dating him then. No, because I'm also going out on dates with other guys. Oh, like... like yeah, like we're going just out. Just enjoying the night out. Yeah, going and getting to know each other. And, what do you, so let's see. And, then some, and in some instances, the max contract player... He goes Drop down. the ball. <laughs> and then the person comes on and like, oh, I'm going to give you the contract. You know uh, what I mean? So like... It be like he's on the IR. He's injured reserve. Oh, I got to bring the next player up. Right. Let's go. But I had stopped. I had stopped roster dating. It was extremely exhausting for me. As I'm getting older, I'm just like, I kind of like to date one person at a time. Um, I just, for me, I just mm. feel like it's very exhausting. Like, I, I don't want to keep up with multiple people's stories in my head and who did I tell what to? And yeah. you know what I mean? Like, I just, not lying, but just like, who did I tell what to? Just in general. Like, what stories have you yeah, shared? Like, yeah, like, what stories have I shared with anybody? I guess that's why I have a problem with, like, dating. Like, because, like, then I have to show at least a little bit of commitment to, like, I'd rather have one person I show that to, mm-hmm. and the rest, I don't even care. Like, so I don't even care at all. So that's how I'm starting to feel right now. Well, now that I'm dating one person at a time, I'm just like, I'd rather, like, see where this goes. And if it doesn't go anywhere, you okay, over. like, you know. Sucks, but you gotta start all over again. I, I, I personally like. I, I think. Cause I don't even call it roster dating. I just call it dating. You know what I mean, like, cause I don't even put it like into categories. I'm just but like, it, it's a roster. For me, it make, for me, it makes sense. Yeah, I, it's I don't not. Know. She's I, head coach. First off, first off, you I'm put like, Greg Popovich over here. Over that shit. Yo, that <laughs> she had the depth chart. She was like, and he's at a ninety. He's at an eighty five <laughs> overall. I'm like, two K. Right, like I'm like, I hear that shit. It just blows my mind. Like, goddamn, right? <laughs> um, no, but for me, it's it's more like um, I tend to open book myself, right? Mm-hmm. So like I'm. So it's like uh, walking into uh, a cafe and there's a magazine on the table. I'm like, that's me. Open it. You mm-hmm. just scroll through the pages, whatever you want to ask. You get an answer. I, I don't really care. Um, and in doing that, um, it's helped me kind of eliminate people mm-hmm. from my shit, right? So where they'll come in. Because, um, you know, you meet every time you meet somebody, you meet the representative. You don't meet who they are. No. Right? You, don't meet the, you don't meet the person until like months in. And that shit irks me because I don't even know how to act one way. Mm-hmm. And that was something that was a learned behavior for me. Yeah. Right? I'm, I, I I can't see a point in changing up now. I'm like, ah, fuck it, right? right. Um, but seeing so many people hate that representative is crazy because it's just the shit you're hiding is fucking nuts. Mm-hmm. Um, like, you walk into a situation, I normally, I normally say things like, I'm an asshole, right? Mm-hmm. Should be apparent by having conversations with me, but I make it known off rip, right? I'm an asshole. Sometimes I say things. Just remind me that maybe I'm like, you know. Uh, You're not being sensitive to the. Because yeah. Because people can be. There's levels of sensitivity. Correct. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, like, I make sure <clears throat> to let people know. Yeah, let me know if I, I went too far. I said yeah. something wild. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I can correct myself and know going forward not to say and right. cross any boundaries right. and lines. Right. Um, and I'll do the same. I, it's really hard to bother me about anything, but you know what I'm saying? If you do, I'll let you know. <laughs> um, so. With that, just people be hiding the wildest shit. They be hiding fucking disorders. They be hiding fucking... Uh, uh, my favorite's exes. Exes uh, is the shit that people be hiding. Yeah. Like, it, maybe you shouldn't be out dating if the niggas outside the restaurant breathing on the glass. You know what I'm saying? Like, wait, maybe, on, just I, maybe. I gotta give a little pushback, though. Because if this person is clearly trying to get away from this person, you expect them to not date because this guy is crazy? I think that there should be a level of uh, if it's going to that extreme, and then if there I'm should just, be there, sh- there should be something done. Like what? What? what happens too often is nothing is done. 
Mm. Right? And and so you, you can see like that I can... a restraining order? <laughs> it, yes. A restraining order. Fucking something. Do something. Yeah. Get a whistle. I don't give a fuck what it is, but put me on game yeah, so I know what's up. Nah, but... <laughs> 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 but not, <laughs> not so crazy. The nigga doesn't need nothing to happen. Let's just have a whistle. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like I, I, need to know, I need to see that you're doing something because if you're not doing anything about a potential major issue... That also tells me that maybe in the relationship, if something crazy happens, yeah. you're not going to say you're doing anything. But you're speaking from the perspective of a guy who didn't even earn that right yet. Like, you just met her, what, a month ago? She don't, she don't have to tell you, like, hey, I have an ex. I'm not, I'm not asking her to shake my hand and be like, yo, Charles is probably waiting outside, breathing on the window, just to let you know. But I'm saying <laughs> that that should come up within the first, uh, the first few interactions, especially if your phone's getting blown up on. Right. I have a I have a couple of um, thoughts about this, but I kind of want to pivot since we're here to talk about sex yeah, yeah, and not pivot, relationships. Let's pivot, let's pivot, so let's pivot, let's pivot. so let, let's keep it going. All right, all right, cool. We'll talk about my 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 uh, things later. All right, all right, all right, let's get it. Um, so this question is um, on a scale of one to ten, mm -hmm. how freaky are you? And on a scale of one to ten, how how freaky would you prefer your partner? Ooh, okay. Freaky is subjective. Um. Only because my yum could be your yuck, or your. <laughs> but, then, but then I would make you on high level than me. Right, right. But that's why I, like I that. can't scale myself because mm. who, who am I scaling it against? I understand. Who am I scaling it against a porn star? Because I'm not there. Or am I? Or am I scaling someone who just started having? Like I don't. I can't scale I myself. Understand. I can't scale myself. Um, as far as my partner, um, if he's more advanced than me, love it. Love Teach it. me something. If he is less freaky than me, if he's open to like learn things, here for it too. I'm I'm here to I'm here to teach. So like, so it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't How about matter you? For me. Um, I don't I don't even know. Like to be honest with you, on like to, for me, like my scale, like because there's certain things that I'll do that are wild, and then there's other shit where I'm just like completely closed off to. I, I, <laughs> right? There's like certain shit I'm just completely closed off. Yeah, to. It's, it's just hard to like scale yeah. it. But like for someone else, I don't, I like personally, I I don't have an issue with pretty much anything, uh, as long as you're not crossing my boundaries and you tell me what your boundaries are. I'm Gucci. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm willing are you to Gucci. Do you do the Gucci? Yo, you can lick the Gucci. Go any further, I might pluck you. Yeah, that's, that's the one. I'd be like, no, stop. <laughs> but I'm saying, like, if, if you, so, then you would be kind of low. Like, you would be at least like a five. Yeah, but there's like, other like, shit. Yeah. There's other shit that, that I low, do though. that would probably all right, all right, would would take me out of what you would consider a low, right? Like what? Like what? Like for instance, tying up, um, uh, clamps, uh, shit like that. Nipple clamps? Yes. Mm. On you. Um, I've had them on me. I didn't like it, but I had to figure that out first before I sat here and decided. Uh, yeah, that you, you know didn't saying? like it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Gucci Land? Of course. Okay. okay. My man said, <laughs> yeah, I'm not even going to do you like that, right? <laughs> I'm not even going to do you like of that. Gucci Land. Why not? Nah, bro. It's your I, world. I love that for y'all. You go to the Me Gucci too. store. <laughs> you go to the Gucci store. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> All right, so what's something on your bedroom bucket list? Oh, I have a lot. I, have a list. I feel like you really have a fucking list. Like there's like <laughs> it's like a check mark. You're like, and that one's not. I do. Okay, I definitely want to role play where I don't know my partner and we meet at a bar. Um, like it's on some blind date type shit. Yeah, like but That's we know fine. each other. But like we're gonna act like we don't know. Oh, each other. I understand. understand. We act like we don't know each other. And you can do that though. That's not that hard. To... It's not, but you know, you gotta do it. You yeah. know, it's hard. It's hard to do it. So it's good talking about it, but then you're like, ah, execution sucks. Yeah, execution is like ass, but I want to do it. Um, I also, um, I would like, I would like to have a threesome. I have still have not had one, um, but I have to be very sexually comfortable with my partner before we get there. Mm -hmm. um, that's definitely on the bucket list. Um, what else? I feel like I want to go to Hedoism. What Just, is that? The <laughs> full blown the resort in full Jamaica. Out. Fucking wait, hold on, wait. What is it? The resort in Jamaica. Oh, it's kind of like a big ass play party. I mean, you don't have to do anything. You could just spectate if you want to. Mm. But I just kind of want to so you can that. voyeur. You can actually yeah. sit there and partake. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. Also, would like with someone. I would also like someone to watch me and my dudes have sex. That's Male or female? Doesn't matter. So it doesn't matter who's getting cucked. You want so someone to get cucked. So how many people? Not cucked because cucked would be my partner. 
watching me having sex with someone else. Correct. Yeah, right. absolutely correct. Right. So it would just be someone else watching us. Exhibitionism. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Right, right. What was your question? I'm saying, like, is there a certain number on it? Like, just one person, or would you want to do it with like 20 people watching? Like, I don't know. <laughs> Round of applause at the end. I mean, that was a great money shot. Great money shot. We like it. <laughs> oh my God. Um, I don't know yet. I can't answer that. I would start with one, and if <laughs> then, <laughs> <laughs> then we have a whole audience. I actually, we had a story submitted to us where y'all seen that, like, y'all. Like, y'all watching, stories is wild. Yeah, I would, yeah, like, I seen a few. I was like, holy shit. Yeah, like, how yeah. I keep this up? Like, they just hit you with the... Yeah, yeah. So, like, how I started Spicy Studios is I was just very nosy about what people were doing in the bedroom. And um, it turned into people was just, like, confiding their stories in me. And I'm like, oh, well, I'm the keeper of, keeper of stories. Yeah. Nobody knows who's telling me these stories. Yeah. So I was like, okay, we need a whole different platform for this. So it used to be called Spicy Po Wednesday. And then we changed it to Spicy Studios because we are a production company that mm-hmm. creates a lot of content. And so people just kept, you know, giving us. Can you share one of the craziest ones? Yeah. So I was gonna tell you the one I'm about to mention is that this um, woman, she was single, but there was this club where you can have sex in front of an audience, like it has a stage and everything. In New York. Or you I don't know if she's in New York. I had no idea where it was. And so basically, she was having sex with these strangers on the stage while people were watching and people in the audience could jack off or they can like masturbate or they can woo like that's crazy. yeah that's and i was like nutty i was like wow i could imagine your adrenaline rushing like yeah like you're literally on the spotlight you want to you want to know what would scare me in that though. one that's that's the I'm one nervous. it's that like my nerves would fuck me up and i'd be like, <laughs> I <was> like <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's nervous. not the blood flow i need it <laughs> 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 I, and I think one of our other crazy stories, um, oh, we just we just read it. It was amazing. So you guys have heard of puppy play? No. Okay, so puppy play is when people dress up as puppies. Isn't that furries? <laughs> furries or am I bugging? Furries is the ones with the, the anal the anal plug with the little tail at the end. That's all it is? I thought they like full on dress up and some then... Of, oh yeah, some of them do, yes. Oh, okay. But this is specifically puppy play. Okay. So they dress up as puppies. And they roll around in the grass like puppies and like, you know, it's, it's it's something that turns them on. And so in this story, it was a woman and her partner, uh, who was also a woman. They go to the puppy play party and her puppy lays on her back, which means that this is the one that she wants to take home. So the partner asks the owner, hey, can we take your puppy home and do whatever we can with it? Sure, take her home. Take her home. Ends up being like a threesome with three lesbians, just like going fucking crazy. In the <laughs> I never heard of that. Puppy play? Never heard of that. Yeah, That's look great. It up. Like if you're walking into the fucking pet store and you're like, oh, you want me to scratch your belly? Yeah. I'm gonna put my dick in you. Right. <laughs> That's, a, that's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, pretty much. That's 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 energy right there. Mm-hmm. I don't know how to match that. That's mm-hmm. that's some people are into some like really interesting stuff. And I don't try to shame it because like if that's not where I am, that's not where I am. Mm-hmm. But like, you know, people the only thing that I do find a little strange to me like what what? Ageism. Super old and like the like you dress them up as babies. For me, that's weird. It's very weird. Yeah, that I mean, baby shit is kind of crazy. It's weird to me because it's like it's giving Pedophile? Yeah. It's giving pedophile. Oh, but I mean, if you're not actually doing it with a, I a know, child. But like you have, it's the I mean, thought of it. Yeah, I think I think because then, you can correlate it. You're like, yeah, like... Uh, so, so then you would correlate the puppy play with bestiality then? You... No. Yeah, I guess you could. You could. Yes. I'm not saying you can't. You could. I don't. Okay. Like... Just run around. I can't believe you fuck puppies. <laughs> <laughs> like, but it's like, I don't think these people really want to fuck puppies. Like, they don't want to. So, what's the point of dressing up like a puppy? Because it's like the act of just dressing up and just like pretending to be something that you're not. Like, fantasy, like fantasizing something. But it just, for me, when it comes to the, the baby, it's, yeah, like, it's like, you were a baby at one point. Like, this is something that is. You know, it was true yeah. at one point. And it was like, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a bit of like, uh, uh, it's, it's creepy a little bit. I, right. I'm I'm sure that people who can there's probably people who can advocate for it or better explain and it better. Explain yeah. it better. Yeah, yeah. But the way like when you're just looking at it, obviously when you don't have all the information, right. you're just gonna look at it just right. the top view, right? Topical, and you're gonna be like, mm, I'm probably not vibing with this. Right. We have something on our show called "That's Too Horny," 
and we talk about that's things fire. that are just way too like, horny. That's too far. You take like, like this is way too horny. So you ever been in that in real life? Like you with a guy, and he asks for something, you like, bro, I'm not going there. Um, no, 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 Mm-mm. not yet, I, not yet, at least. <laughs> I, I've already, I already put my foot down on the things that I won't do. What's what things you won't do? Uh, don't touch my asshole. Okay. Um, that's like one of my big ones. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, <clears throat> oh, don't put your feet by my mouth. You don't suck toes? <laughs> I have a thing about feet. <laughs> Do you suck toes? I will suck a toe, bro. <laughs> I would. Yo, Mal, 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 I hate when and you I would, I, I will suck a toe. You have suck toes, nigga. There's a difference. Yeah, but yeah. it's not something I do. Like, I'm not a, just a toe sucker. Like, every time I have sex, I, don't, I never suck. T- every, every time I have sex, I don't have to suck toes. Okay. So I'm not like a... I don't need it. Okay. But I'm open to it. Okay. I'm open to it. Okay, what are your no-nos? Really? I don't play with penetration in my ass. Like, none of that. I'm not doing none of that shit. But, you know, you want to go... It's fun, though. Nah, nah, nah. I've done it before. I've pegged a guy before. It was fun. It's fun for you. Yeah, it was fun for um, you. Like, but he enjoyed it. Like technically, it, your your prostate can be milked. That's an area that can be very I'm, 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 stimulating I'm cool for men. Tongue, that's fine. That's fine. I, yeah. I like I said, I don't that's like anything by there, but I can completely understand. And yo, salute to people if you're comfortable with your sexuality to do it. Rock out. It's just not a thing for Poppy. I think Peg is a bit a bit much though. Is it? He enjoyed it. It was nice. It was nice to be a little dominant in the bedroom. I mean, I, I like I like a little bit dominance. Cool. I think that's dominance. that's 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 no, that's, not my, that's not my way, bag. But dominance in another way. That's different level. I, I ain't there yet. That's not my bag. I'm not there yet. That's okay. I'm, and that's okay. If I'm, you not guys are not there. There. I'm not getting there. I'm not getting there. You know what? It is absolutely fine that you guys are not there. Yeah. Totally fine. Like it's so, not like. So how did he ask you? Like how did he like? Funniest thing. I know he was like, rub your thigh. Hey, really quickly, could you shove a dick no. in my ass? No. <laughs> Crazy. It wasn't his or yours? Like, no, it was his idea. No, no, I'm saying like who? Um, oh, the strap? Yeah, whose strap? It was your strap or his? It was my strap. Oh, your strap. So yeah. you had a strap I bought already. a strap. No, I bought a strap. For him? Yes. That's crazy. So Did you Amazon it? Because that's a really awkward Amazon delivery. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so you used it on him? I got your strap. All right, good. good. <laughs> okay, so let me get to how he, how he asked me for it. So he asked me because he sent me a porn of this guy... That's smooth. That's smooth way. And I'm like, That's smooth way. God, Michael, I was like, huh? I was like, you like this? He was like, <laughs> he want you to ask. Yeah, he was, I was like, you like this? He's like, yeah. He's like, I'm. He's like, I'm kind of into this. And I'm like, I was like, okay, you want to try it with me? He's like, yeah. I was like, okay, I'll. I was like, have you ever done it before? He's like, no, I want you to be the person that does it to me. I'm like, Ooh. oh, okay. So That's I smooth. He did, he, he did the best. I mean. Yeah. So I ordered it. Make, make it think it's her idea. I'll be like, oh, it's another point. I was like, I just saw it. It was interesting. You really want to do that? Right. I think this is a great idea. <laughs> so no, exactly. And so I um I ordered it. I ordered the the smallest size because you know it I'm, I'm starting on the first time. Uh, don't want to rip his hole open. Um, Jesus, that, no. and so, that was visual for me. Right now. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm a very I'm a, I'm a very I'm a very colorful speaker. Um, and so. Yeah, one night, got the lube, lubed it up, pushed his legs back. Wow. Yeah. So my problem would be, I'm thinking like a girl now, like, what if that's all he want now? Like, like what if... Then that's all he wants. I mean, they, what, like, what's wrong with once you find something you like, continuing to enjoy that? But what if you don't enjoy it? Like, like what if she doesn't get the pleasure out of it? I did get pleasure out of it. Did get pleasure out of it. Yeah, right, cool. I did. Oh, I mean, he, but he wasn't someone that would want to keep doing like. Whatever. He's he's not someone that wanted to keep doing that. Like he. It oh, was so a you mix, did it, it once. It was a mixed bag. Oh right, right. Yeah, right, it was. Right. It, I only did it once with him. Um, yeah, I only did it once with him. But, All right, we gotta we gotta cut because we got some else coming back behind us. Yeah, but. This is a great conversation. I know we was just about to get crazy, but oh, wow. it was it was definitely yeah, it was definitely teetering we toward extra spice. No, oh, we we were we were definitely supposed to, but we had booked uh, a little later than we should have, so we kind of missed out on our full time. Yeah, because uh, someone else booked after us. Uh, you know, we're normally pretty good with our booking, um, but with uh, the live show and all the other stuff that we're doing right now. Yeah. By the way, live show, September 2nd. Yeah. Um, like, we have we come so much show. stuff going on. Live show. Where is it going to be at? City, City Winery. Winery. Where's City Winery at? It's, uh, it's um, uh, Pier 57 in the city. Oh, y'all live uptown? No, it's not uptown. No. Oh. It's, uh, it's 11th Avenue and 15th. 
Oh, okay, that's not far. Okay, yeah. good, good, good. Okay, yep. yeah. Okay. All right, so, well, I'll come. I mean, you guys can get me back for a part two. No, nah, so we, we got to do a part two. No, no, we're definitely doing a part two. We have the whole two hours. We have yeah. the whole two hours. Yeah, because now we have to go over that relationship like, shit. Because we started nah, down the road, and like, I know that shit's yeah. going to get crazy. It seems like the second hour is about to get good. Yeah, <laughs> it's about yeah, to get good for a second. For, a second for sure, we definitely have you on for part two. Nah, we definitely will. But with that being said, you're going to come to the live show, right? September, that's the final time. Put it in your calendar. Try to make it if you can. That's Labor Day weekend, right? Yes. Yes. Ciao. After party gonna be crazy. Gonna be crazy. Ciao. All right. Well, we'll see. Yeah. Thank you for coming. Of course. So, with that being said, where can everyone find you at? Oh, you can find the Spicy Studios on Instagram, Twitter, at and TikTok on at the Spicy Studios, or you can find me Courtney Shav, Courtney C O U R T N E Y underscore Shav S H A V on Instagram and Twitter. I am not on TikTok. <laughs> you on Thread? Uh, no, nah, I'm not on Thread, but Spicy Studios is on Thread. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yeah, thank y'all for tuning in. Big facts. All right. So we out. Peace.